Section 18 of The Golden Gems of Life. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Ron Broach. The Golden Gems of Life by Emery Adams Allen and S. C. Ferguson. Section 18 Punctuality. Amongst the elements which conduce to success in life there is one of rare value, which, by some strange oversight, is classed as of little account. We refer to punctuality. We regard it as a virtue. To be punctual in all of your appointments is a duty resting upon you no less obligatory than the duty of common honesty. An appointment is a contract, and if you do not keep it you are dishonestly using other people's time and consequently their money. Punctuality, says Louis the Fourteenth, is the politeness of kings. He need not have confined his remarks to blood royal. It is the politeness in every body, and know that whenever you fail to meet an engagement promptly, by which exertion you might have done, you are guilty of a gross breach of etiquette. It is certainly impolite to do a wrong to others, and when you have made an appointment with another person, you owe him punctuality, and you have no right to waste his time if you have your own. Success and happiness depend in a far higher degree on punctuality than many suppose. It is not sufficient to do the right thing, nor in the right way, but it must be done in the right time as well, if we would reap the rewards of our labor but when so done its effect in the problem of success is great and efficacious lord nelson attributed all of his success in life to his habit of strict punctuality many of our most successful business men date their success from the time they commenced to practice this virtue thousands have failed in life from carelessness in this respect alone nothing inspires confidence in a business man sooner than his quality nor is there any habit which sooner saps his reputation as a good businessman than that of always being behind time. Lack of punctuality is not only a serious vice in itself, but it is also the parent of a large progeny of other vices. Hence he who becomes its victim is more and more involved in toils from which it is almost impossible to escape. He who needlessly breaks his appointments shows that he is as reckless of the waste of other people's time as of his own. His acquaintances readily conclude that the man who is not conscientious about his appointments will be equally careless about his other engagements, and they will refuse to trust him with matters of importance. To the busy man, time is money, and he who robs him of it does him as great an injury as far as the loss of property is concerned as if he had picked his pockets or paid him with forged or counterfeit bill. It is a familiar truth that punctuality is the life of the universe. The planets keep exact time in their revolutions, each as it circles around the sun, coming to its place yearly at the very moment it is due. So, in business, punctuality is the soul of industry, without which all of its wheels come to a dead stand. If the time of the businessman be properly occupied, every hour will have its appropriate work. If the work of one hour be postponed to another, it must encroach upon the time of some other duty, or remain undone, and thus the whole business of the day is thrown into disorder. If that which is first at hand be not instantly, steadily, and regularly dispatched, other things accumulate behind till affairs begin to accumulate all at once, and no human brain can stand the pressure. Punctuality should be made not only a point of courtesy, but a point of conscience. The beginner in business should make this virtue one of the first objects of professional acquisition. Let him not deceive himself with the idea that it is easy of attainment, or that he can practice it by and by, when the necessity of it shall be more cognate. If in youth it is not easy to be punctual, then in after life, when character is fixed, when the mental and moral faculties have acquired a rigidity, to unlearn the habit of tardiness is almost an impossibility. It still holds a man enthralled, though the reason be fully convinced of its criminality and inconvenience. 
A right estimate of the value of time is the best and surest foundation for habits of punctuality, for if you are not likely to economize time, either for yourself or others, unless you fully realize how valuable it is, and when lost how utterly irreclaimable. The successful men in every calling have had a keen sense of the value of time. They have been misers of minutes. Hence you must try and realize the value of time. Each hour, as it passes swiftly away, is gone forever. Lost wealth may be replaced by toil and industry. Lost friends may be regained by consideration and patience. Lost health may be recovered by medical skill and care. Even lost happiness and peace of mind may be restored. But lost time? Never. Whilst you read these lines, it is being numbered with the dead past and dying present. There is no recalling it. There is no regaining it. There is no restoring it. You must make the most of time as it flies. You have no right to waste your own, still less, then, that of others, by your lack of punctuality. Not only should a person be thus punctual in all his express engagements and appointments, but in all his implied ones as well. If he has regular hours for his shop or office, let it find him there, at his desk and at work. Punctuality in the performance of known duties other than the keeping of appointments is also one of the chief promoters of success in life. If a certain work or other duty is to be performed, we are too prone to put it off for more convenient season. Such delays are often a fruitful source of after-troubles. How many businessmen have been brought to bankruptcy and ruin by the failure of one man to meet his obligations promptly? How many times are we put to great work and expense because we neglected or put off the performance of admitted duties? It is easy to say, wait a while. So easy to let the burden of today's work and duties fall on tomorrow. But when tomorrow comes, and it has its own peculiar duties, and the result is we simply have extra burdens to meet when the time finally comes that our work can no longer be delayed. Punctuality is a virtue that can give force and power to an otherwise utterly insignificant character. Like charity, it covers a multitude of sins. If it were easy to show by examples from the lives of great men that their success in life was owing in a large measure to the habits of punctuality, all great commanders have possessed this faculty in an eminent degree. The reason punctuality is such an invariable element of success is not hard to determine. The punctual person, one who always lives up to his engagements and is prompt in fulfilling his implied duties as well, is just the person who business is conducted after the most approved forms and methods. They are the ones who have time at their disposal to cast their eyes over the field of legitimate enterprise, and at once adopt whatever may seem to them to possess real excellence. Having met all their engagements promptly, their word is as good as their bond, their credit unshaken. In short, every avenue of success is open to them. But with those persons who are habitually behind in the fulfillment of their duties, their business is generally in a very unsettled state. They have not that freshness and business vivacity and life which is always observable in the man who drives his business instead of allowing it to drive him. What wonder, then, that they sink beneath the load of accumulated cares, give up the great battle of life in despair, and are content to fill a subordinate place in the economy of the world? Would that young men thought more of what is involved in punctuality. It is not merely the being on time, but it imports such a habit that, carried into life, it is one of the main instruments in making real youthful dreams of success. It is that which makes business a pleasure instead of a drudgery. It is that which goes so far in building up a reputation of sagacity, skill, and integrity. No one can have a high opinion of a person who is so regardless of punctuality, even in small matters, as to be continually breaking his word, under the impression that it is of no consequence, as so many often say, to excuse their habit of being false to their word. 
There are some persons who seldom or never do as they promised. We know persons who in other respects are worthy people, who can scarcely command confidence because they are so lax in fulfilling their engagements and meeting their obligations in small matters. We know young men of promise who are daily losing ground among their acquaintances for a similar reason. A man will soon ruin himself this way. In all business transactions, in all engagements, let all do exactly as they say. Be punctual to the minute. Even a little beforehand is far preferable to being a little behind time. Such a habit secures composure which is essential to happiness. End of section 18. Recording by Ron Broach.